Yo, what is up? Joshua Casper here with another Ableton Live video tutorial. This is probably going to be a lengthy one, so I'm going to jump right in it. We're going to be learning um, kind of an introduction to Sampler and some of its more complex um, attributes and things you can do with it. And this is some things I'm going to need you to know before I start making some more complex Sampler instruments. So um, definitely follow along with this. First thing you need to do is go download these three samples so you can do it with me, or you can do uh, you can do what I did. And all I did here was just um, I had an instance of Massive, and I played the C3, D3, E3, and F3 of the same pad sound, and I played one with a low pass, one with a mid pass, one with an all pass. So let's go ahead and listen to what those sound like. That's the low pass. That's the mid pass. And that's the high pass. So um, obviously if you have Massive, there's no real reason to use, to do this and then put it into Sampler, at least as far as I can tell. I'm sure there are, but as far as I know, I don't know why you would do that. But I'm showing this for if you have an instrument um, in your studio and you're recording it. This would be a way to get it into Sampler so you don't have to whip out your instrument every time. Uh, let's say you're on the road and you want that special flute that you have at home, uh, this would be a way to set it up inside a sampler in an instrument rack so you have it with you no matter where you go with your computer. So um, let's just go ahead and get started and we're going to have a MIDI channel and on the MIDI channel I just have some MIDI here. Um, it's just C, D, E, and F3 and it's just on loop. So come in here, drop an instrument rack on the channel and then drop a sampler inside of there. And the first thing I'm going to do is the all pass and drop it inside. Um, I'm going to turn the interpolation off because interpolation, what the interpolation is doing is if right now I play C on my keyboard, it will play uh, the C note here. And if I play D, it will play the same C note, but it will pitch it up for me to make it sound like a D. Okay, so um, that's what that's doing, but we're going to actually play or theoretically you have played the C, D, E, F all the way up the scale from the low end to the high end on your instrument. Uh, if you're going to do it right, that's what you'd have to do. And then you'd have them in here and this, um, this sample would be much longer. But like I said, for, this, for the sake of the tutorial, we're going to keep it short. So uh, I don't need interpolation, so I'm going to turn it off. Interpolation takes a lot of CPU and we don't need to be using it for this. Um, so this looks good, perfect. And that's what it sounds like right now. As you can see, it's playing the same C note, but it's trying to pitch it up for me. And if I turn it on best, you can hear how it sounds better at doing that um, kind of pitch, pitch up sound. So um, pitching up the uh, note anyway. So the next thing I need to do is come into zone. Because I have a C, D, E, and F, I need four zones. So what I'm going to do, first thing is rename this C uh, All Pass. And I do that because I'm anal retentive and I like to keep everything marked. And as I rename it here, it renames it down here. And then I'm going to hold down control, click and drag down um, three times. Actually, you know what? Undo that. And let's come in here first and put this on C3. Oh, make sure you get the ch actual chain selector. Right? Um, so now it's on C3. The root key is on C3. And now this will only play when my MIDI note hits the C3. So watch, right now it's going to go C3 and then D3. So we're going to hear it and then hear nothing, hopefully. Okay? So this, right now, C3 will only play um, on the C3 note on the MIDI. So I'm going to pull this over just to make sure um, even if it's sustained, it's never going to play that second note. So that's perfect. That looks good. Now I'm going to do what I did before. Hold down control and duplicate this. Perfect. And then I'm going to rename these C, D, E, and F. So C, D, rename, E, rename, F. Perfect. Now I want to come over and move the chain selector to D, to E, 
and to F. And that worked perfectly because it moved the root key for me too. But your root key does not have to be where the chain selector is. The root key could be down here, but then you're going to be using interpolation to move it to here. So we don't want to do that because we don't need to. Cool. So now here we go. Now these should, um, these should all play, but watch, they're all going to play the same C note. So I'm on D here. So that's the same C note because all of them are on the C note here in the sample. So here is D. I want to move the sample over to D. Zoom in. Perfect. Now E, I want to move the E over. And the F, finally. Click in there so I can move this over. Perfect. And now those will only play when they're on the right thing. And also, so um, you can close the zone now. And if you want to change the zone, you can do it here. And the reason why I labeled them is now we can, you know, we can toggle through those much easier, knowing what note we're on now. Perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is repeat that entire process for the mid pass and the low pass. And I'm going to do that off camera because I've just showed you how to do it. And uh, you, if you don't remember, you can just watch the video again. And it's good practice just to start doing it um, over and over again because you're going to have to if you're going to be making some serious instrument racks using sampler. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then come back to you. But you want to do that for the all pass and you want to do that for the mid pass and the low pass. And I'm going to just rename this here All Pass because it's not C All Pass, it's all the All Pass, right? So anyway, go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I've done it. You should have something that looks like this, All Pass, Mid Pass, Low Pass. And you can see up here in the zones that they're all changing, All Pass, all the Mid Pass, Low Pass. Um, this is what it should sound like. Pretty cool. Um, the next thing we can do is come in here and I'm gonna, right now I've got this volume cranked up to six, so I'm gonna hit it to zero. And what I'm gonna do is come in and put uh, a utility at the end of each of these. So, and boost it up six. And that way, um, when I give this device to my homie, uh, he won't have to crank up the overall volume here. Um, he can then use that volume a little bit better. You know, just, I'm doing it for my homies. And um, a final thing we might want to do is put a limiter on the end just in case um, something goes wrong here. And okay, so that's pretty cool. So now that we have that, you're asking yourself, well, if I don't solo that, it's going to play all three of those at the same time. And that, you know, that's not the point here. So we're going to come into this velocity selector here. And what I'm going to do is, if I hit the note hard, I'm going to, like a 113 or above, I want it to play the all pass. If I hit it at uh, 112 to, say, 56 or 57, I want it to play the mid pass. And if I hit it uh, anything lower than um, 56, I want it to play the low pass. And then we come into the MIDI, and I'm going to adjust it here, but this would be... Um, if you play your keyboard right now. If you've done that and you play your keyboard and you hit the key hard, it's going to play the high all pass. If you hit it very, very softly, it's going to play the low pass. So right now it should play only the high pass for us. And we can notice by the volume here. And the reason why is because the MIDI notes here are here. So if I come down and I play this here, it should go 
All pass, mid pass, mid pass, all pass. Cool, huh? And if um, I come what, below 56, it should play the um, low pass. So I'm going to go all pass, mid pass, low pass, uh, mid pass. Pretty sweet, huh? So that is the introductory uh, tutorial for this kind of velocity selector. Now, you don't need to do that for your, your VSTs because you can obviously do that inside of the VST. But if I have my guitar and I've got a slap bass and then I've got a, just a regular pluck and then I've got kind of a dead note, um, I'd want to be using this. Because now if I'm nailing my keyboard on the road in my hotel, I'm going to get that slap bass. But if I just kind of press it, you know, nice and normally, I'm going to get the um, regular pluck on the guitar. And if I just barely tap it, I'm going to get those dead notes, which is, um, you know, very useful. Because now I don't need three different instrument racks to get those different sounds. I can just use it all on one channel, one rack, just like you would use one guitar to get those same sounds. Um, I hope that makes sense for you guys. I hope it worked out. If you have any questions or anything like that, get at me. Um, we're going to be building on this, and we're going to be making some very cool stuff in the future.